Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com, here I am, and uh, really this is kind of a cliche sort of thing to talk about, because everybody else in the entire internet has already talked about this like a million times, but you know what, what the hell, I haven't had a lot of time to post videos recently because I've been working really hard on my special projects at work and it's been eating up time like crazy, in other words I've been in that lab and not in my own lab, so anyhow, um, I bought this at the store, like I said, this is a cliche. Everybody and their brother has opened up a smoke alarm and looked inside. And I might even get open one up. Look how uncool I am. I'm not even remotely cool. But just for giggles, I want to look and see if I can detect anything from it. Because you see, if you look really closely in this thing, it says somewhere here. This product is designed to detect products of combustion using the ionization technique. Blah, blah, blah. It contains nine-tenths. 0.9 microcurie of americium-241, a radioactive material. Well, duh. This product contains radioactive material, blah, 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 blah. That's awesome. This contains, let's see here, this is uh, plenium-210, so this contains uh, nine, uh, one tenth of a microcurie. This has nine times that much. Nine times. And it ticks pretty heavily, too. It even has nine times the radioactivity of my strontium-90 source, which I'm not going to be pulling out. Let's see if we can detect it. That's kind of what I'm getting into. I just want to see if I can just detect it a little bit without pulling it out. I don't want to pull it out because I don't want to get it all over the place. As you can see right here, my counter is registering here about 46, 44. It'll go all over the place, but statistically it works out to about 38 counts per minute. Oh, there it goes, 38. But I mean, over time it would come down to 38 counts per minute. All right. Let's pop this sucker open and see if we can detect anything. The fact that you're seeing this video means that I found something. Because if I don't find anything, I'm not posting the video. It'll be pointless. Since everybody knows that, that smoke alarms have stuff like this in them. Look at all this neat stuff. Well, yeah. not important. It has this harmless battery. But this is really, really, really what we care about. Now, americium-241 has a half-life of about 432 years, give or take. That means that if I had 100 units of it, in 432 years I would have 50 units of it. In 432 more years I would have 25, 12.5, uh, 6.125, I think, and it just keeps on going and going and going. By the time seven generations of that half-life have gone by, I'll have less than 1%. So anyhow, here it is. All right, it's pretty nasty stuff, Amory Seam 241. It's 3.5 uh, curies per gram, and a curie is 37 billion disintegrations per second. So that's a significant amount. How does it open? Let's see. Uh, who cares? Uh, let's see. Does this pop open somehow? Hmm. Well, kind of just crap all the way through this thing. Warning. Battery has been removed. Well, duh. Let's see if I can get inside of this thing by some means. Yeah, this is a scientific instrument right here. Hmm. I will now pause the video while I find something to tear this open with. Alrighty, I am back. I used two surgical tools, a bottle opener and a thing. And I have opened it. I'm not going to open it all the way because I actually intend to use this smoke alarm. So I have this rubber glove, which is probably really not needed, but you all know how I am about safety and everything like that. It's always a good idea. We're, we're still at about the same rate. And here's the Geiger, oh, Geiger counter. Here's the smoke detector. There's the battery. The americium is inside of this thing. And there's the little sounder. And this is the americium right here. It's inside of this little device. Now, Americium is not only an alpha producer, it is also a beta and a gamma producer. So, if I take my Geiger counter, pull the cap off, and then I place the Geiger counter near this little piece right here, I should start to pick up the betas and the gammas. And look at that. There they are. Nothing to write home about.
as you can see it's almost all blocked by the casing. But it's definitely there. Nasty little substance too. It's created by um, decay from plutonium of all random things. And as you can see, with comparison to uh, polonium-210, right here, flip the polonium-210 around, here's the back side with the plutonium, uh, plutonium, where the polonium-210 actually is. Polonium-210 is similar. If you put something in front of it, like this piece of plastic, well, we don't use that, that's my cap from my container, let us do, put something around it so that you can see this. I'm sure you've all seen this before, but um, here you go. Uh, the reason I have the bottle opener is I was drinking beers. Here is a bottle cap from a beer. We'll put this over top of the of the um, polonium 210. We will then throw it out, and as you can see, you don't get anything. Pull it off. You know, what? I better unplug or cut this off. And switch to this sound because it's going to get really bad. Once you pull back just a little bit, it all goes away. Gotta love alpha producers. They're great though because they are so positively charged, being a positive charge of two, that they are able to electrically uh, charge the air around them and, and bridge a connection, which is how this thing works in the first place. I am hoping to, I'm buying a scintillation detector and a multi spectrum analyzer, and I hope to put a uh, that guy right there, as well as many other objects in front of it, and then you can actually see the gamma that comes off of it. The, the little tiny gamma that, that produces very low energy, but I should be able to detect that with a gamma spec uh, with a, a gamma spectroscopy, which of course is my favorite little hobby. So um, there you go. Anyhow, this has been kind of a really goofy thing for you to look at. Nothing amazing. Don't do this at home like I just did. Because if you don't know how, what you're dealing with, if you actually open that up and remove the little button from it, you could actually hurt yourself with it. It is possible. Not if you touch it with your hands so much, but if it gets into your skin, if you breathe it in, if you ingest it in any way, once it gets inside of you, it's horrible stuff. Like that polonium-210 right there is incredibly deadly if it gets inside of you. Virtually harmless when it's on the outside of you. But this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. And remember, always use safety when touching or handling anything whatsoever. If you have questions, ask somebody who knows something. Like, don't ask me, for example, because I'm not actually a scientist. Not the classical sense of a scientist. I'm a computer scientist. I am not a physicist, not a health physicist, not a doctor. So if you have any questions, ask one of those type of pe types of people, and they can answer your question. I'll try to answer it, too, but just understand that I'm a normal person, just like you. So, uh, there you go. Have fun.